I figured that with, uh, we're middle of the week, I might as well chronicle a Hall of Famer. I'll try to get one done a week minimum. Um, and, and I thought this is a good time now to talk about Stan Makita. So, uh, Stan Makita, as we know, he, he passed on a couple months ago. I did not do a video about it at the time. Um, I think now is a good time to go ahead and do this. Uh, at the time that he passed on, um, the, the timing of it, oddly, was when I was talking about his era. I was doing a history series, over 100 videos, one year for, for each video. And uh, he did a lot. He really did. He, he helped to reinvent the game. Not only that, he re reinvented his own. And this is where I, I saw some things that I thought, wow, I, I don't know how much that gets reported on. So let's go ahead and go through it. He comes into the league unheralded, 58-59, three games played, and one assist. He's born in Slovakia. His given name wasn't wasn't Makita either. He took that from his aunt and uncle who adopted him. Because uh, my guess is because it's a lot easier to say Stan Makita than his Slovak name. So anyways, he plays three games that first year and gets four penalty minutes. I have never put penalty minutes on the board for anybody's career until today. 59-60, uh, he plays 67 games, eight goals, 18 assists, 26 points, 119 penalty minutes. So Makita's being played as as kind of a, a, a tough guy, um, a two-way forward. He's not he's not yet showing what he's going to become. 60-61, uh, he plays 66 games, uh, 19 goals, 34 assists, 53 points. He gets 100 penalty minutes that year, and that is the year that the Chicago Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. And now that he's up to about 20 goals, there's some excitement now. There's some, some idea that maybe Makita and Hull could help lead Chicago to further Stanley Cup victories which is just going to lead to some frustration for the Chicago organization and for Makita himself. Um, at some point during all of this, Makita gets his stick caught in a door and basically in the gate when he's going out onto the ice. And uh, it curves the stick. So he's like, all right, so he uses it. And then he realizes how much he likes this. So he uh, gets a torch and starts curving sticks on his own. And over the period... Of, of time that he played in the 60s him and Hull decided to to have some fun with those sticks and it led to the NHL eventually saying all right we've got to have a a, a a level that the blade can be at for curvature can't be beyond that that's just ridiculous so Stan Makita an innovator um 62 or 61 62 70 games played 25 goals 52 assists 77 points 97 penalty minutes so now he's above a point a game. He's hit his first 20 goal season, and he's still almost at 100 penalty minutes. 62 63, he plays 65 games, 31 goals, 45 assists, 76 points, 69 penalty minutes. Penalty minutes drop, the points go up, and he hits his first 30 goal season. So the curved stick works for him. 63 64, 70 games played, 39 goals, 50 assists, 89 points, 146 penalty minutes. That gets him an Art Ross Trophy. So he is the top scorer in the NHL, and he's uh, getting a lot of penalty minutes, too, while he's getting there. 64-65, 70 games played, 28 goals, 59 assists, 87 points, 154 penalty minutes. He wins the Art Ross for a second year in a row. But at some point in here, this season, his daughter asks while watching a game on TV, Mommy, why does Daddy spend so much time sitting down? Because Makita's in the penalty box. So Makita realizes the visual that he's giving children everywhere and decides, I'm just going to stop doing that. And it's remarkable. It's remarkable that he reinvents his game and he doesn't lose anything in doing so. Think about it. How many guys right now playing the league who are known as, as physical and they'll get penalty minutes for being physical that they can say, I'm going to take that completely out of my game, that it wouldn't hurt their game at all. Um, 68 games played in 65, 66, 30 goals, 48 assists, 78 points, 58 penalty minutes. This is the first time he has less penalty minutes than games played in his career. But it's not the last. 66, 67 is a remarkable year for Stan Makita. 70 games played, 35 goals, 62 assists, 97 points, 12. That's not a misprint. 12 penalty minutes. He wins the Art Ross, he wins the Hart, and he wins the Lady Bing, and he's the only player in NHL history to win all three trophies that same year. So that is remarkable, and based on that alone, you're already at a Hall of Fame career. If he stopped right here, he's already a Hall of Famer. He doesn't stop. 
72 games played, 40 goals, 47 assists, 87 points. This is the only time he scores 40 goals in his career. He gets 52 pen or 14 penalty minutes that year. Again, he wins the Art Ross, the Hart, and the Lady Bing. Uh, this was the last year that a Chicago Blackhawk will be the scoring leader in the NHL until Patrick Kane does it in 2015-2016. And this was also the year that an errant shot uh, tore off part of Stan Makita's ear. And Makita decided to have had enough of that garbage and started wearing a helmet. He is one of the first NHL players to wear a helmet. Smart guy. So he's smart not only for the fact that he, he, he takes the, the dirty edge out of his game, and he's still just as good, if not better, but then he realizes, this is kind of dangerous. I might lose part of my ear or something worse. So I'm just going to put on a helmet. Smart guy. 68-69, um, he plays 74 games, 30 goals, 67 assists, 97 points. His penalty minutes, inch back up to 52. So for two years, no penalties at all. And then he goes back to more of just a realistic total. So he, he goes from one extreme to the other, and then he sort of ends up in the middle for the rest of his career. Uh, 69 70 plays 76 games 39 goals almost 40 47 assists 86 points 50 penalty minutes 70 71 he plays 74 games 24 goals 48 assists 72 points 85 penalty minutes reliable he's as reliable as old faithful you can you know what you're going to get out of him uh 71 72 he plays 74 games 26 goals 39 assists 65 points 46 penalty minutes and that's after 70, 71, 74 games, 24 goals, 40 assists, 72 points, 85 penalty minutes. So that's the one time he has more penalty minutes than games played after he decided to clean up his game. In 72, 73, he plays 57 games. This might be his best year. 27 goals, 56 assists, 83 points. Now, because he only plays 57 games, he only gets the 83. But if he plays another 17, that's 100 points. He never had 100 points in his career. Uh, 32 penalty minutes that year. 73-74, plays 76 games, 30 goals, 50 assists, 80 points, 46 penalty minutes. 74-75, he plays 79 games, 36 goals, 50 assists, 86 points, 48 penalty minutes. 75-76, 48 games played that year, 16 goals, 41 assists, 57 points, 37 penalty minutes. What starts happening later on in his career is he's got chronic back problems. Once you start having chronic back problems, they're called chronic for a reason. You just don't really fully get past it. Um, 76, 70, 70 plays 57 games, 19 goals, 30 assists, 49 penalty minutes, or 49 points, 20 penalty minutes. 77, 78, 76 games played, 18 goals, 41 assists, 59 points, 35 penalty minutes. 78, 79, 65 games played, 19 goals, 38, 36 assists, 55 points, 34 penalty minutes. So again, he's missing time with back injuries. 79-80, his last year he plays 17 games, decides not to go to game 1400. Uh, scores two goals, five assists, seven points, 12 penalty minutes. So where do we end up? Well, at the time he retired, his 1467 points were third behind Phil Esposito and Gordie Howe on the all-time scoring list. He ends up with 1,394 games played, 541 goals, 926 assists, 1,270 penalty minutes. So he actually played more games then he had penalty minutes. So that's impressive considering how many penalty minutes he had early in his career. In his playoffs in total, he played 155 games, including that nice run in 1961 to a Stanley Cup. 59 goals, 91 assists, 150 points. It's worth noting there was less playoff rounds during his time in the NHL, or his playoff totals would have been over 200 games and probably over 200 points as well. Um, at this point right now, uh, or as of the end of 1718, so 2017, 2018, he ranked 14th in points, 18th in assists, 31st in goals, and 40th in games played overall uh, among NHL players that have ever played. So tremendous totals for a guy who never scored 50. He only scored 40 once, and he has 541 goals. Never had 100 points, but he scored 1467 in his career. Very, very predictable and, and reliable. First team All-Star in 1962, 63, 64, 66, 67, and 68, and 65 and 70, he was a second team All-Star. He made it to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1983, and in 2011, Chicago raised a statue of he and Bobby Hall, but we're just talking about him right now, 
um, raised a statue of them outside of the arena to commemorate what they did and and what they've meant to the team. And uh, Stan Makita is one of the all-time greats. Again, for the fact that he puts up these tremendous points and goals without having any one season that's just amazing, like he has Art Ross trophies here, but 89, 87, 97, 87, those are solid, reliable totals, but not like what the kind of gaudy totals that Phil Esposito was putting up after that in the 70s. He never reached that kind of stratosphere. Uh, very well-respected player. I, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about him. And uh, that, that means a lot because a lot of the players who played in that era, I've heard things said about some of them. So, uh, good player, uh, good guy, and uh, had a fantastic career. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.